Okay, our group two of macromolecules are lipids and fats. We're just going to do lipids and fats for this lecture. Um, as before, you could stop this at any time to copy the notes. Uh, we'll do proteins and nucleic acids at the end. So, basically, fats and oils are rich energy storage molecules. And as we've discussed when we did the How Matter Behaves lab, when we were using oils, uh, you saw how they have a very hydrophobic nature to them. So in general, fats and oils are hydrophobic biomolecules made up of these hydrocarbon chains. If you go back to our basic discussion of hydrocarbons, we know that the bond between hydrogen and carbon is a nonpolar covalent bond. The electrons are shared evenly, therefore those molecules would be very hydrophobic and insoluble in water. Fats and oils, in general, provide energy storage, protection, as well as other functions to living things. Um, fats and oils contain a glycerol and three fatty acids joined together via a dehydration synthesis reaction. And we sometimes call these molecules triglycerides. We will do this example in class, but here is that dehydration synthesis hydrolysis reaction between glycerol and three fatty acids to form a fat molecule. Basic types of fat. When we did hydrocarbon chemistry, we discussed uh, a saturated hydrocarbon versus an unsaturated hydrocarbon versus a polyunsaturated hydrocarbon. And I stated when we did that lecture that we'd be getting into uh, what this truly means, especially when we talk about fats. Well, here we have it. You've known as you've read food nutritional labels or uh, had any type of health class where you discuss nutrition you've heard of both saturated versus unsaturated fats. Well, here, you're going to actually learn what those are. What does it mean to be a saturated fat? What does it mean to be unsaturated fat? A saturated fat is when the hydrocarbon chain of that fat, they have no double bonds. They are saturated with those hydrogens. These are the fats that are solid at room temperature. We often call these animal fat. The other type is unsaturated and we could be unsaturated or polyunsaturated. In the hydrocarbon, if it's unsaturated, you have carbon-carbon double bonds. Therefore, th these hydrocarbons are not saturated with hydrogen atoms. And we, when we often talk about unsaturated fats, we are referring to fats that are liquids at room temperature. This would be plant fat. The distinguisher give you some type of a realization of what these two things are. If you've ever eaten a piece of steak, and you've cut away the fat, that would be a saturated animal fat from the cow. Or vice versa, the plant fat, if you ever use vegetable oil, peanut oil, corn oil, all those, those are types of plant fats. They are liquids at room temperatures, they are unsaturated, so on and so forth. So examples of lipids, there are steroids. Steroids, like all fats, are hydrophobic molecules. They are very important to biological membranes, which we call plasma membranes. All cells have a plasma membrane, whether eukaryotic or prokaryotic. Examples of steroids include cholesterol, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. You've heard of all of those. Um, most likely in health class, we'll discuss the, the roles of some of these in class when we do our, our discussion of fats. Um, cholesterol, the steroid is responsible for atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. And when you have hardening of the arteries that lead to the brain, that can lead to a stroke. If you have hardening of the arteries that lead to a heart, the heart, that would then cause a heart attack. Another important component of cell membranes is phospholipids. Phospholipids have a hydrophobic tail and they have hydrophilic heads, and we'll look at their structure in a minute. Um, Biological membranes or plasma membranes, the cell membrane, is composed, is the major component of those membranes. It's this phospholipid structure. Other types of fats include waxes. Uh, waxes are hydrophobic molecules and they're used for waterproofing. Uh, they are similar in structure to a triglyceride. Uh, we, we do find them in the cuticles of plants, ears of animals, fur coating, acts as a water repellent, and beeswax. Oils, protection of plants and animals, it is a water repellent, and then of course you have fats in general, which are long-term energy storage, especially in animals. Um, right now, since it is autumn, a lot of animals are 
bulking up on their lipid layer um, because they'll need that long-term energy storage throughout the winter months when they hibernate. In general, fat, uh, compact fat, in animals we call this adipose tissue, uh, there is six times as much energy in fat than in one gram of starch. So although sugars are, are a quick fix of energy and the first source of energy, fats uh, provide long-term energy and can provide six times more energy than those of sugars. So here we see our examples. If you look at the arrow here, here is our phospholipid. Uh, we have that hydrophilic head. And if you look there, what makes that head very polar? We have oxygen in there, and we also have that phosphate group surrounded by oxygen atoms. And then we have the hydrocarbon portion, which would be the tails of that phospholipid, which would be very hydrophobic. And then here you can see the, a typical structure of a cell membrane. Over here is what cholesterol would look like. And down here we have that waxy coating found on the berries here, and that would serve as a, a water repellent. So there you can see the structure of, of wax in the little box here. That's basically all for our, our fats and lipids lecture. Uh, we will do proteins and nucleic acids as our last two groups, and we'll work on the activity related to this in class. Have a great day, everyone.